Back in 2013, there was a big scandal involving a Republican governor who had hopes of running for president, and it involved then-Governor Chris Christie of New Jersey and the shutting down of access lanes to the George Washington Bridge in an act of sheer political retribution to a local mayor. The lane closures lasted for days. They caused hours-long traffic jams that delayed buses carrying school kids and commuters trying to get to work and even emergency vehicles. It was a political stunt that hurt Christie's political aspirations, had real-life consequences for ordinary people. It led to a bunch of people uh, getting prosecuted and even indicted and convicted. Now, at some level, that sounds awfully sim similar to another political stunt pulled recently by another Republican governor with his eye on the White House. Because last week, Republican Ron DeSantis in Florida used taxpayer money to fly 48 migrants from Texas to an island in Massachusetts. The migrants, including children, were told they were being flown to Boston or Washington, D.C., where they would be given jobs, housing, and educational opportunities, according to a lawsuit. Some of them filed this week against DeSantis and others. Instead, they were taken to a small island where they were left without food, water, or shelter until residents there learned about their arrival and came to help. Here's the thing. This was a stunt clearly done to sort of stick it to his political enemies. But the incident is now under investigation by the sheriff of Bear County, Texas, where the migrants had been living. I believe that they were preyed upon. Somebody came from out of state, preyed upon these people, um, lured them with promises of, of a better life to just be uh, exploited and uh, hoodwinked into making this trip to Florida and then onward to Martha's Vineyard for what I believe to be nothing more than political posturing. And it is reasonable to ask if the announcement of that investigation might have played a part in DeSantis suddenly canceling a second planned flight of migrants, this time to Delaware, the home state of President Biden. Some great new reporting from the Miami Herald says that they were at it again, that this second group were also asylum seekers from Venezuela, were also promised a flight to a destination where there would be more resources to help them. But instead, their flight, planned for this week, was abruptly canceled. Joining me now is one of the reporters who broke that Miami Herald story, Sarah Blasky. Uh, Sarah, it's great to have you on. I, I learned for a lot. Me. I learned a lot from your reporting. Just walk me through what you learned from the folks you interviewed about who these people were, what they were told, how they ended up in a hotel, I believe, waiting for a flight that never came. So all of these people had remarkably similar stories. All of them came from Venezuela. We talked to at least half a dozen people who were getting on that bus that you showed there um, a moment ago. And, and they all said that they had recently come from Venezuela, made the journey up through Central America, crossed the U.S.-Mexico border, close to here, close to San Antonio, Texas. And then they ended up at the Migrant Resource Center here in San Antonio. And at that center, you have three days. You can stay for three days, and then you're out. And so people are very desperate here to find a way to move forward with their lives. And that's right. what happened here. As they're outside of that center, they're approached by a woman who never gives her name. She says she's from an organization that is going to help them get somewhere in the country. She said they couldn't that she wouldn't tell them where they were going, or she couldn't. Um, until the very last moment, but it would be away from Texas to a place that had more resources for them and potentially jobs. And so they signed up and, and quite literally the way it worked was you just get into her SUV. If you're, a, if you're a yes for this program, you'd get into the SUV at that point, they would drive to a La Quinta outside of uh, San Antonio, outside of downtown. And then they waited until there were enough people to fill a flight. And that news came in earlier this week, there was gonna be a flight to Delaware. And as of that night, as of Monday night, that flight was still on. These, these people were, were told you're going to Delaware in the morning, everything leaves at 5 a.m. And, and then the next morning, the bus never came for them. The, the plane never came and, and they were kind of left sitting there. What they didn't realize was that in that span of time, um, an investigation was announced, as you mentioned, um, by the sheriff here, Javier Salazar. So, well, I'm just, it's so weird. I have to say, I mean, I, not to hammer on this point, but you're an investigative reporter at the Miami Herald. You know, I, I've done reporting on government agencies. This is just not the way government agencies or contractors tend to operate. Like, some sketchy unnamed woman standing outside telling people to get in an SUV? Like, who is this person? 
Who does she work for? Who's paying her? How much is she paying? Is this the same woman as the Perla who got folks to go to Martha's Vineyard? Do we know that? This is not Perla. Um, Perla was involved. Our understanding is Perla was involved in this flight as well and in um, booking the hotel, for example. But the woman that was approaching everyone, nobody identified as Perla. She was a different woman. We don't have a name at all in this case. And um, so, so no, we don't exactly know how all of these pieces are connected. We do know um, that Governor DeSantis took credit for that flight to Martha's Vineyard. We do know that the same planes were going to be used. We do know that Perla was involved in both, this woman. Um, but there are also others. We, we spoke with people, and it sounds like there are three or four other recruiters out there for this program. And, and to date, we don't know who they are. At some point, right, the, there's, a, there's some contract the governments of Florida, using taxpayer money, signed to employ, to hire someone to do this. And that has to, they can't keep that secret forever. Am I wrong? So we do know that they have paid over $1.5 million to a company called Vertol Systems. Um, and, and Vertol Systems really is is the logistics coordinator behind this program, or at least behind the Martha's gotcha. Vineyard um, trip. And, and that you know funding comes from a program uh, that was funded up to $12 million to relocate um, immigrants who are seeking asylum or otherwise out of Florida into other places. And, um, and so that is, that is where the funding for these flights came from. Um, interestingly, yeah. these, these folks were not in Florida. Of course, they were in Texas. Um, but and, and not but only that's that, our best understanding. Yeah, the statutory language uh, in that budget was unauthorized immigrants. There's some uh, some in the Florida state legislature pointing out these people are not uh, unauthorized. They are actually pending a, a, a asylum review. Uh, Sarah Bleski, thank you so much for your great reporting. I really appreciate it.